Welcome to another episode of Outer Heaven, the Knives Monroe podcast. My name is Knives Monroe, and I'm your host today, and I'll be your host uh, forever because it's my podcast. Duh. Um, Now, I want to talk about social skills and how up until a year ago I didn't have any. But first, I just want to give you guys a little pre-frame. I, you know, today's guest, as you've seen, and the title is Seems Fuentes, right? And I think she's a self-confessed RGV foodster, right? And, you know, I've seen her around. She's been on my radar for quite some time. I met her a few months ago, and she was a lovely person. Now, I'm breaking format because usually I do the interview, and then I record the intro after the fact. So I kind of have a heads up on what to kind of tell you guys to look forward to. I'm breaking format. I haven't spoken to her yet, but by the time you hear this podcast, I would have already had my interview. So why am I breaking form? That's not important. What is important is I have really no idea what to expect from Seams. I think she's a, you know, intelligent person. She's very well cultured. She travels around. She seems very interesting. You know, I don't really ever plan for these interviews. You know, I don't even like to call them interviews. They're really just chats. They're really just talks. So for all I know, we're not really going to talk about her. We're not really going to talk about what she does. We may not even talk about the, you know, music scene here in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, We may not talk about anything fun. This episode might suck. I don't know. It's very possible. and And I risk that every single time. That's what makes it so thrilling. And that's what makes it fun. I want it to be as entertaining as possible, and I want it to provide as much value as it possibly can. But, um, you know, I don't format an interview. I don't have questions. I don't have note cards. I I just, you know, want to talk to these people, and that's what I want to give you guys. So that is for sure and certainly what I can offer you and what I think this talk is going to be. So I look forward to that, and um, I look forward to that. She's actually going to be in the building um, maybe in half an hour. So I thought I'd knock out this intro as well. So I wanted to talk about social skills. I wanted to talk about um, growing up and not really having those social skills, and I wanted to know if any of you guys could actually relate to that. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, I'll give you guys a little bit more into my, my history Um, you know, if you know me today, you might think I'm a pretty social person. You might think, um, that I've always been this social butterfly. The truth is, you know, as I said in the orientation of, of this podcast, you know, I wasn't born Knives Monroe. I, I created and became Knives Monroe. And I, I definitely mean that. And, uh, I think I was naturally straight out the womb an introvert, um, And as a result of big dreams and big goals, I had to become an extrovert. I had an ex-girlfriend tell me in 2010, after a big fight, I think she wanted to hurt me, and she did. Um, She told me that I was an emotional vampire, that I would just suck the energy and the life out of her, you know, and just feed off of it. And I remember at the time it really hurt. I was like, how could you say that? You know what I mean? But I think she was right at the time, you know, if I could be kind of autobiographical. As an extrovert, I kind of feed off of the energies of other people, other uh, extroverts, you know. My girlfriend, Claire, she's an introvert. So sometimes um, I think she definitely feels zapped and emotionally drained from from living with me, right? But uh, we're like a yin and a yang. Um, You know, I kind of am pretty confident and I I don't – where she gets anxieties – that's where I come in, and where I get anxieties, that's where she comes in. So I think we're we're kind of like two pieces that form a whole for sure. But um, like her, I was I was an introvert growing up. You know, um, personally speaking, I never got out. I never went outside. All I did was watch TV and watch movies. And uh, I wasn't a big gamer growing up. That wasn't really my generation for me and in my household. I maybe had a few games, but it didn't really. I, I kind of felt. See, back in my day, there was no online gaming, so there was something very secluded and um, quiet and lonely about it, which uh, I see the value in that today, but back then, it wasn't really my bag, and so I didn't really develop these social skills. 
And flash forward, you know, I became a filmmaker. And flash forward, I even made a few movies, put movies out there um, locally here at the theaters. They sell out. It's good business, fun stuff. But I still never really developed these social cues and these, you know, um, I, I just never really kind of understood people. All I really knew was what I saw on television. Uh, cut to last year, um, I got a job at a call center here in McAllen. And uh, I got promoted right out the gate, um, straight out of training into a coach position. And that forced me to be a very social person. That forced me to kind of get out of my shell. And I'm the kind of person that I don't really believe in and bullshitting um, a blunt person and I kind of just say it and say things as it is and I kind of say what's on my mind otherwise you know I'll get bored or um, I don't know I just kind of feel like that's always just been fun to me and life is always just like a, you know I'm just like this big character another I'm like a walk-on part on, on everybody else's uh, show of their lives really so with that job I, I had to develop these social skills um, and and here's what I found you know, there's some people um, that I find that are introverts that were just like me, you know, when I was growing up. And these guys are kind of like the outcasts and the social rejects of society. And, you know, some people would call them freaks and they're secluded and they kind of just keep to themselves and they beat to their own drum. And I really relate to that because that was me for almost my entire life. And I gravitate towards those people. And uh, I like to talk to those people and get to know them and kind of not just feed off their energy, but I try to, to throw some of my energy their way as well, right? As a way of kind of maybe like um, awakening some sort of giant inside them or as a way of, you know, um, if they get some sort of residual sort of self-awakening, um, self-enlightenment from talking to me in a brief conversation or several, that's something I want to offer because... You know, I didn't have an older brother growing up. I didn't have like cooler people um, than me that were older than me kind of take me by the hand and show me things that I thought were fascinating. I kind of had to discover these things or uh, way later into the game, like 16 years old, 17 years old, I had friends kind of show me another side to things. But um, if I could be that person for these introverts, I want to do that, right? And uh, But what I found is sometimes... There are some crazy people out there, and I know that's a dismissive word. I'm not trying to to uh, negate them and say that their feelings and their backgrounds like aren't valid. I'm not trying to say that, but there there are some people that are that are hurt, that are broken, and have no concept of that, and aren't really um, cognizant of it, and definitely have no intention in doing anything about it. Right, and maybe you guys have encountered a few people that were irreparable, and I, I I don't like using those words out there for these kinds of people because I truly don't believe that people are beyond saving or beyond help. But there are definitely some people out there who, um, there's you know they're outside my jurisdiction. I can't do anything for them, and that hurts. And um, those are the people that I was was attracted to for a very very long time, and the more social that I got, years have gone by now, one or two, anyways, and um, I've gotten a lot of experience, and I can kind of determine who's the psycho now. I can kind of determine who's the person that's unsafe for me, who's the person that you know is not worth my time, really. And I'm not saying that with any arrogance. I'm saying that matter of factly, you know, before I would kind of test the waters of a room. And kind of see who who can I talk to in this room, right? But now, having been a little bit more well versed in and in, uh, and so you know the sociology around me, I've kind of adapted to being this wallflower and watching the room and watching the clowns give themselves away. And it's much easier for me now today, as an adult, as a twenty eight year old, to to wait and to let someone kind of come out as an ass as opposed to trying to really kind of extrapolate that from a, from a person, you know, um, that is what I've learned, you know, and, and, and I'm bringing this up because there's a lot of people in my life who, you know, um, have hurt me. And, uh, as a result, you know, they were really just self-sabotaging and hurting themselves, but they hurt me in the process, you know, namely like my father, uh, an ex-girlfriend or two, and some other people that are just uh, orbs, 
you know, obvious rotten bastards that have just gone out of their way to fuck me, right? Uh, we've all been there. It's part of it. I'm not going to pretend like it didn't happen. You know, I'm all right. I, I, I forgave these individuals, and it was something I did for myself. And just like I said in that first episode, episode zero orientation of this podcast, I healed the boy and the man appeared, right? And that was very important for me to get to the next level of business, to get to the ne next level of self-love, to get to the next level of of some sort of higher calling or some sort of uh, um, intelligent intelligence, you know what I mean? Uh, it's some sort of emotional equilibrium. Um, it's kind of like an IQ, but with a you know an emotional um, kind of intelligence that that I just see a lot of people don't have, especially down here. And I forgave those people, and it gave me a lot of power. You know, it gave me a lot of. Um, um, closure, of course, but also peace, definitely some inner peace. And there's some people that you can't make peace with is what I've learned. There's some people that spit on your forgiveness. There's some people that mistake your, your love for arrogance. And that's because there's something inside them. Um, they haven't mended themselves. And think about that. Um, and I want you guys to be careful out there, whoever's listening to this podcast, as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as a careerist, whatever it is that, that is your specialty, that is something that you want to do, um, whatever value that you have to give as a parent, if you're passing that on to your children, keep a force foot around your heart and be guarded. Be the guard at the heart of your life because there are some crazy people out there who will make you believe that you did something wrong that was irreparable, that you are something that you're not. They will tell you how to feel. And they will tell you as if they have some sort of, some sort of jurisdiction or authority over your life and mind. They will tell you how, how you think you feel. And that's a projection. That's what they're doing, right? These orbs, these obvious rotten bastards, right? Um, and they don't know any better. And, and you don't have to pity them. You know what I mean? I had a friend just the other day tell me the exact opposite of love isn't hate. It's apathy, right? And there's some people that that's exactly where they come from. That's like their root. And maybe, you know, the more I, I learn from the Rio Grande Valley, especially because it, it is a tumultuous and uh, oftentimes a negative environment. It just is. And I'm an optimist, right? Negativity. I'm kind of jaded by negativity. I'm jaded by pessimism. It's not something I enjoy, right? I'm cynical about cynicism, believe it or not. So I'm an optimistic person, an optimistic person. And I choose to look at the beauty and the grace. And uh, I choose to look at the value of anything, you know, as opposed to asking myself, oh, why me? Why did this happen? I prefer to ask myself, what is great about this? What can be great about this? Better questions, right? And I truly believe that. There are some peoples out there are some people out there like you know they they project everything that they feel and what they hate or their insecurities and they put it out on you and you need to be careful with those people dismiss them it's okay you don't not everybody's going to like you not everybody's going to be great and these are things that I did not learn until I was 28 years old because I was the kind of guy that did not get out there and you know if you're a social gamer, if you are social on YouTube, on social networks, if you're social on the internet and you stay in a little bubble, the, the world out there, there's there's crazy nuts people out there and there's gems out there, beautiful people. I tend to have many of those on, on this podcast. And I tend to have those on this podcast that are going to differ from my views. And I tend to have those, I'm going to want to have those on my podcast that I, I don't agree with and that um, have the ability to hurt me. Sure, because I think there's something, I think there's some value there that's, that, that you guys will be able to get out of it. And I want to give you guys that. But on your journey, you have to get outside and you have to, you know, you're going to get hurt and you're going to get knocked down. If you want to make it, you're going to get knocked down. You're going to have to come back up. You're going to have to get back up. And there's going to be years where you were just getting knocked down. But opportunity and greatness comes to those who, you know, who are just at the edge of just about to tap out, just about to give up. And they had something else inside them, drive, maybe a higher purpose, a mission, whatever it was. And that's how they were able to, to get the greatness that they were always after, 
right? And, and, and any greatness that I've ever had in my life, whether if it's just being able to see the grace in my daughter's smile or being able to crawl into bed with my girlfriend and be happy that this is the only person that I've ever wanted to be in a bed with, you know what I mean? Um, loving these little things that um, I'm just incredibly grateful for because life is so incredibly precious, um, that's, a, that's almost a luxury, you know? And, and we can all tap into that. And we can all focus on it. And I think we should in spite of being burned, in spite of getting hurt out there, right? And it's a, it's, it's a concrete jungle out there and you need to protect yourself, all right? And uh, that involves uh, an emotional IQ, that involves an emotional intelligence, and that involves a certain tenacity that you need to go out there and protect yourself, man. Because people are going to try to hurt you so they can gain the significance. Think about that. Surely in your life, even if you're a good, wholesome person, you've made fun of somebody at their expense for, so you can have some significance. Surely. I know I have. There hasn't been you know, an undefeated streak on my part. I'm not fucking perfect. I've, I've been a bully, you know? But I've tried to atone for that. And I continue to do so because that's the right thing. That's the right thing to do. And it's always the right thing to do. Doing the right thing is always the right thing to do. You hear me? So what a weird rant. I know it's kind of uh, opaque. I know it's a little vague. What is he specifically talking about? Right? Recently in my life, you know, after the death of... Event Franco, which I still haven't processed. It hasn't even been a week yet. Um, it really just enlightened me uh, how trivial many, you know, differences that I have with people truly are. It's trivial. It's, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. How about we just forgive one another, forgive ourselves, and move on for the sake of business, for the sake of creativity, for the sake of inner peace. And there's some people that won't meet you there, that won't meet you there halfway, and that's okay. That's part of it. Uh, you can't dwell on those people, on the orbs, on the uh, you know obvious rotten bastards. You can't invest in them and put your time there. It's not worth it. Move on, move out. You know, do what you have to do. Raise your standards and surround yourself with other people that will challenge you that see something in you and that demand more from you than anyone else could ever expect. And I think you're going to be all right. So I just got a text from Seems Fuentes telling me she's on her way here at the Outer Heaven headquarters. And uh, I really look forward to this interview, guys. Um, I kind of don't know what to expect. And so you're going to hear it. And I think this is a really fun and interesting context to hear it. And I hope you enjoy it. Because all I really care about, and the only reason why I'm doing this here, is to leave something greater than myself behind me after I go. And I'm really looking forward to episode 100 when I interview you know, someone of, of, of huge stature, right? Um, huger than myself. And they do me the favor of, of having this talk with me here on this podcast. And they have a massive following. And all of a sudden, all of that individual's you know, followers are like, let me see, and let me hear this guy's podcast. And then they see, wow, 100 episodes. Let me go back. Ooh, Nacho Dung, Luis Cantu, Seems Fuentes. Who, who are these people? And then that value is there for all the artists that I've been talking to. I look forward to that moment, and it's going to happen on a long enough timeline. It does happen. And uh, that's why I'm here, guys. I live to serve. This episode of Outer Heaven, the Knives and Monroe podcast is brought to you by Flashback, photo and video services by Outer Heaven. Record, relive, remember. Did you know people forget 40% of what they learned in 20 minutes and 77% of what they learned in six days? That's madness. You guys are going to finish hearing this podcast. You're going you're gonna to forget over 40% of it in 20 minutes? That's absurd. That's the brain. We're deletion creatures, okay? They forget 90% of what they learn in one month. Isn't that madness? Now, surprisingly, millennials, 18 to 34 years old, are more forgetful than baby boomers, 
that of the generation of their parents between 52 years old and 72 years old. We're more forgetful than our parents, guys. Our experience of this world is perceived 83% with our sense of sight. If you had to sacrifice one of your senses, right? Taste, smell, touch. If you had to sacrifice one of them, what, what would it be? Nobody ever says sight. Okay? Video is processed by the brain 60,000 times faster than text. One minute of video is equal to 1.8 million words. That's the power of the brain. That's the power of, of, of video, right? 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual. Have you, have you guys ever wondered what do blind people dream of? If you're blind and you have dreams and you've been born blind, please email me at the outer heaven h a e e v e. Oh my gosh, at the outer heaven h a e v e n. Email me and talk to me about what you dream about. I'd love to hear that. Ninety percent of the information transmitted to the brain is visual. Video triggers emotions like no other medium, guys. Video is forever. Okay, flashback, record, relive, remember. If your life is worth living, it's definitely worth recording. Guys, without further ado, thank you for being patient and listening to me ramble. This is the longest intro I've ever made so far. And there'll be a lot more where that comes from. Guys, without further ado, this week's guest, foodster, blogger, personality, and Valley native, Seems Fuentes. What's the longest time you've ever been a vegan? Um, I was for two months, January and February. Like of this year? Years, yeah. And um, so I've been vegetarian since January, but I gave up the veganism because I had cheese. Like in. Just, so you had cheese one time and you're like, I'm no, done. No, no, I've had, I've had cheese plenty of times because... Could you come a little closer? Yeah, of course. Cool. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Just yeah. uh, try to talk. To me like this, okay, and we're good. Okay, awesome. Yeah, cool. So, um, you had cheese one time. That was like a relapse, and you went into um, junkie mode. Yeah, because cheese is actually one of the most addicting foods that yeah. you can try. So once I had it once, I was like, oh, I miss it so much, and then I just are just you kept are, are you pretty well versed in the in the science of, um, of this food? Because um, you said it's addictive, right? Yeah. How do you know that? Oh, uh, just read up on things. Uh, when I tried to go vegan and realized how hard it was for me to give up dairy and cheese. I gave up milk pretty quickly. I just stopped buying it, but cheese is around you like every single day. So I started wondering why can I just not, why can I just say no? Mm -hmm. So I started just looking it up and I just found a bunch of articles that said it's one of the most addictive things and that's why we're just so used to. That's about it. So you said you were in a band. Yes. What do you, what do you do? What's, what's your whole deal? Um, well, well, you know what? Before we get into that, okay. um, we met once. Yes. Um, at the incubator. Okay. At the incubator. Mm -hmm. And well, give me some more like insight on what that was about. Because it, it felt like, oh, okay, I'm going to get to know this person. Yeah. And then well, something um, happened. The plan was for us to start working on uh, some stuff with Valley Native, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure you're still working uh, on. But I never uh, got anything back from... What's his name? Oh my god, I'm really horrible Silver. with names. Silver. Silver, yeah. Sure. Um, I actually don't work there anymore. No? No. You stopped? It didn't really work out like a relationship. Yeah? You need trust in a relationship, Yeah, you know? and it just wasn't working. Well, I yeah. just wish that there would have been more communication like by this day or by this time. I just didn't know what happened and then I never heard anything back. So I was like, okay, well maybe right now isn't the time. Maybe another well, time will be Were better. you going to be featured like as a personality or, or yeah. like as a blogger? Like um, we're going to see your text or we're going to see, you're no, going to be a video No, it was going to be a video, uh, video personality. Just um, the food, uh, uh, the chef stuff that he wanted to do to mm -hmm. cover uh, different chefs from the Valley, kind of very Anthony Bourdain, mm -hmm. like show you what the Valley's food's about. So he was supposed to do something like that, but it just did not work out, so. Are, Hopefully we we'll... Are you a chef? No, I'm not, actually. Okay. Um, I'm a huge foodie, and I'm a huge fan of chefs, and I'm hoping to get back into the food industry, maybe uh, become a chef, hmm. um, learn the craft from someone who knows, but right now I'm not. I, I cook very just sporadically. How many birthdays have you had? I am 26 years 26 old. 26 years 27 old. in September. When you say back into the food industry, what do you mean? Um, so I've been teaching for two years, uh, and then before, teaching. 
teaching. Cool. Yeah. What do you teach? Uh, English. Well, I don't teach anymore, actually. This okay. is like the first year that I'm quitting because I just was very unhappy in the teaching world. Why? Um, because I don't really believe our education system is mm. doing what it should be doing for most of our kids, especially in this mm -hmm. area where there's so much lack of like English knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so I got really, really uh, bummed out by the education system. But before that, I almost... I was working as a server for four and a half years. Mm. That's what I was doing while I was in college. So cool. uh, I want to jump back in to the restaurant industry because eventually I'm hoping that I'll open up my own place like in the future, yeah. far, far from now. So wow. that's the goal. So yeah. you have a goal. I have a goal. That is the goal right now unless I get back into the restaurant industry and realize maybe this isn't for me. You know, is it going to be a vegan restaurant? I think that it would be like a majority of vegan food. I wouldn't do all vegan food because I would like to have the most amount of people come and enjoy whatever food that I decide to make. But I do think that having a big vegan menu that's very flavorful could be really, really cool to like introduce to the Valley world and, mm -hmm. and make So would you want to, you know, hypothetically, your dream restaurant, it's ran by you, yeah. right? You probably are the chef. Um, yeah, my brother also loves to cook a lot and he's up in Austin right now and I think a big dream of his is also to like give up what he's doing, which mm -hmm. he works uh, at a car dealership, mm -hmm. and kind of start cooking. Mm -hmm. And I think he's more of a chef. I'd like to look look into like running um, the back of a restaurant, the front of a restaurant, and maybe manage mm -hmm. so that I could be like front of the house, and maybe mm -hmm. my brother could do something wow. like chef, or maybe I'd be the chef. I don't know. Right. I'm barely gonna dive back in because I just made all these decisions like this summer. So very recently. Yeah, very recently. I've made a lot of recent decisions to just change everything that I've been doing because I wasn't very happy with what I was doing. So that's the plan right now. But we will see because plans change. But that's the goal. Um, you'd want to open up this restaurant in the Valley? Yeah. Do you see in 10 years you're still working here? Um, I do. I mean, you've been around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've also lived, well, I went to Texas State for a little while, but I spent most of my time in Austin, and I fell in love with Austin, and I always thought, as soon as I graduate, I'm going to move to Austin, but then I started rethinking that because I think the Valley is really growing right now, and I think that I'd want to be a part of it growing because it can grow in a negative way, and it can grow in a positive way, and I think a lot of people are trying to make it grow in a positive way, and I'd like to really be a part of that. So I would like to live in Austin one day and maybe New York for a little bit, but mm -hmm. I do see myself sticking around in the Valley for, for the most part. Wow. You know, I'm a Valley native and so are you. Yeah. You were born and raised here? Yes, Mission, Texas. Mission, cool. I, I moved um, from Oklahoma to Dallas and then from Dallas here when I was like six. So I've lived here for over 20 years. And, you know, would you call yourself an artist? Um, I guess so. It's hard to call Because you're huge on, on social media. Thank you. No, you I, are. I and don't... You, you know what you're doing, and you're doing it right, and it's, Thank you. And it's smart, right? And, uh, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying you don't like, know what you're to doing. figure it out. You know what I mean? So... I, even I know what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So I think I, I, you know, I love what you do, and you have a, a great big personality. Um, yeah, I consider that an art form, right? And so here you are in the RGV. You could do this anywhere. Like you said, New York, you've done it in Austin. In your eyes, what's the value of doing it here? What's the value in, in where it could go bad or good? Mm -hmm. And right now, maybe, I don't know what that percentage is for you, but why do that when you could apply what you, your value mm -hmm. uh, in Austin where, where one could say it's already good? Yeah, well, because I feel like a lot of people in Austin are already doing what I'm, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And in the Valley, not a lot of people are taking risks and trying to do something that's not so, you know, nine to five, eight to five, you know? So I think that the value of doing it here is showing people that it can be done here and that it can be like a career or that you can have like a, a happy, fulfilling life mm -hmm. in the valley doing something other than what everybody else is doing, like kind of making your own niche. Uh, I think that that's what Austin is great at. Austin is great as people just coming in, having their own ideas and then that blowing up. And I think that we need to start that here. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the way Austin's doing it because Austin has a completely different culture, but we have our own culture that's unlike any other place in the entire world really where English meets Spanish and Mexico meets Texas and I feel like starting something here shows younger generations like you know you don't have to leave to progress you can stay here and progress here you know now I'm with you 
Um, by the way, you have your hat backwards. I'm going to have my hat backwards. Yeah, it's um, the cool thing to do. I, I want to be cool, yeah. too. Um, what really you're doing is working day, on the internet, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> just... Let's try not to do that. I'm sorry, because yeah. it comes out. Got you, It's got cool. You. I was like, is she going to do that a hundred more times? She yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, let me make sure that this is off, too. Good. Sure. Got you. Totally cool. No, it's all part of it. Um, now, I'm right there with you with, with making this place better, and also I think about the future. I think about, you know, we're probably the same generation. I'm 28, you're 26. Mm. And um, uh, we're part of the same generation. We remember a valley that wasn't as what it is right now. Mm -hmm. And it is growing and it is turning into something beautiful. That's why I'm making this podcast. You know, that's why I'm getting people that I think are important in the valley. And I want one day someone to be like, whoa, this guy's, this is the people I've been looking for right here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm looking for that 16 year old knives to be like, wow, that's what I've been waiting for. Definitely, you know, um, at the same time, it's frustrating. Is it frustrating for you? Oh, is it a pain course, in the ass? All the time. Talk um, to me about that. I mean, I'll be really positive about certain things and, you know, just feel like, man, it's really, really looking up. And then you hit like a like a wall of maybe some negativity or just thinking that things are going to go a certain way and then realizing that people had other mindsets. And Can you give me an example of that? Um, I've had a few times where people want to collaborate and I'm totally into collaboration, obviously. That's why I'm here. Like, I think it's so important to help each other out. But there's a lot of um, this mentality of, like, well, you're going to do this for me. And that's, and that's about it, you know? So when I'm thinking that things can be very collaborative, it's more very one-sided. And that is very discouraging because I feel like we should, we as people that are trying to expand this art industry should be, united and should be helping each other other than using each other but i feel like that's where the valley just needs to figure itself out like do you just want to use people and find your way through that or should we just get together and work with each other and i feel like that's something that really discourages me when i'm trying to say it's not about me like i'm not making any money right now like it's about progression and unity but a lot of people don't see it that way so it becomes tough to deal with those type of people constantly when those are the type of people that are reaching out to you you know mm -hmm. so that's been the most difficult thing so far the fact that sometimes you just don't see eye to eye with people and 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 their way of thinking about the, i feel like valley. it's a i'm gonna take a leap and say you're hispanic yes your last name's fuentes fuentes yes that's cool i'm hispanic yeah did that come yeah off? yeah well i figured i mean monroe though yeah but i mean most people down here like yeah. are hispanic in right. some way sure but i like, never i never know because people, when I That's moved true. here, people didn't know. They, you know, I'd get the gringo and I'd get the... Yeah, I get that a lot, too. Do you? I bet. Yeah, I get all... Especially, Can you speak Spanish? Yes. Yeah, actually, Spanish is my first language. Cool. So, my parents are from Mexico, and mm -hmm. um, we moved down here when I was, like, one. Mm -hmm. So, I never had to live in Mexico, but I spent most of my time in Mexico. I feel like yeah. you've encountered the mm, negative stereotypes of the valley, mm -hmm. the, the negative stereotypes of Mexican-American psychology. Yes, definitely. And I feel like that's the biggest problem here and and, uh, and I'm not trying to make this a soapbox about that but that's the challenges that I've encountered yeah, as definitely. well is I feel like you have to train people on how to collaborate it's mm -hmm. like they don't know they were never exactly. taught it's right. hard not that I would know maybe sometimes I'm doing it wrong too and and if I were doing it wrong then I hope that someone would say like hey that's not the right way or maybe we could do this better and I would totally take that into consideration but I do I do believe that people need to learn how how to collaborate a little bit I think so too. Better, yeah. I feel like uh, that's my job. You know, I, I have a filmmaking background. I'm a movie maker. Um, started putting services out there to to educate people, to bring people together because I felt like it was kind of selfish for a long time. I made movies by myself for ten years, and it was great. But uh, after a while, you make a movie, and it's kind of like, is this all there is? Yeah. I much prefer to go to Yerberia and like film somebody's set, put it online, and then yeah. that was it's more special to me. Definitely, right? and then you can get more people involved too. So that's really. I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's, that, that's what I'm trying to do here. And I've encountered, wow, I have to train people on how to collaborate. They don't get it. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people have been burned and uh, a lot of yeah. people, you know, backstab. And I, I don't know if that's like a exclusive trait in the Valley, but it's something that I encounter every day. I don't think it is. I think the problem is that since this is all really new, people are just so used to like, I guess my huge problem is the fact that, you know, corporations and these big buck companies come into the valley and kind of just well you're working a minimum wage job and you're just kind of being used you know you're not following a passion you're not excited about going to work you're just kind of like drilled and you do this and you come in on time and that's it so 
everyone has the mentality of like, well, I'm so sick and fucking tired, you know, mm-hmm. like I really don't enjoy what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So when they do venture off into something that they might enjoy, they still have that mentality of like, you know, I've been used and abused for a really long time and things that I wasn't loving. Mm-hmm. So I think that that like kind of is why we get that. Well, that's my perspective on it. I think we've just haven't had enough people following their passions to feel like happy enough yeah. to feel like I'm going to give my all to someone and I expect it all back and it's going to be okay. Most people are like, no, I've given my all already and it didn't really work out. So now I'm just in this like limbo. And yeah. I feel like maybe if we talk about it more, then people will start realizing like, you know, it's not right. when you're following a passion and doing something more in the arts, you don't have to like be afraid like you are when you're working under somebody who doesn't really How do you know care. that? Um, how do if I know I'm somebody that? that doesn't know that, if, I, if I'm somebody that doesn't know that if you follow these passions and, and this creativity that I'll kind of, like that I'll be, I'll be okay, um, how do I know that if I've never felt that before? Well, you, you have to take a risk. If you're not going to take any risks, then you're never going to understand whether that's what's right or what's wrong for you. So, um, how do you I'm, know that? Well, I, have, I agree with I you. I feel like I've been taking a lot more risks. Um, after I graduated from college, I didn't know what I was going to do, so I took like six months off and did really not much except for like paint and like sketch a little bit and just really had like some downtime but then I went into the teaching world thinking maybe this is for me and then I took a risk realized that that wasn't what I wanted to do and then eventually started taking risks in a lot of things started my food blog that was a risk because I'm putting money into something that I'm not really making that much money out of so I feel like because I've taken risks in a few areas of my life um I've now started to see that I've grown a lot and I'm a lot happier. And the more I continue to take risks, the more I see that that's what I should be doing. And I think that showing by example is the only way that it's going to go here in the Valley. You, I can't tell you, Hey, well, you should take a risk. They're going to be like, well, what, what the heck do you know? But if they see that I'm taking risks and I seem a lot happier, I seem a lot more productive this way, then maybe they'll they'll change their minds and be like, hey, well, you, I could definitely You said something really important there, uh, and if you could elaborate, that'd be great. You said um, that you grew and then you got happy. Yeah. You know? uh, I, I'm a big believer in, you know, growth is happiness. Progress definitely. is happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, satisfaction is the end of growth, you know, in a lot of ways. Definitely. What have you done um, notably recently as well that where you you could measure the growth and what in what capacity um so i started with the follies uh this punk pop band in march um i had never sang in a band before i'd have actually never sang in front of absolutely anyone except for probably my mom um and in the shower maybe uh but i've always wanted to sing and i was really afraid to do it and i saw that they needed a lead singer and i went and i tried out and i got the part and you know three days later i was um at Galaxy Fair, which is like mm-hmm. one of the biggest festivals mm-hmm. here. And um, and that was a huge risk and I was very afraid and I was very shy and I feel like I was very stiff at first, but it's been a few months now and I feel completely okay on stage doing what I'm doing. And, and it wasn't easy and I've had the hardest times and I've cried about it and I've been mad about it and I've been like, is this the right thing for me? Like, do I look stupid? You know, like just all the insecurities, but At the end of the day, um, you know, we just had a show on Saturday and it was probably one of the funnest times of my entire life where I got off stage and I just had to like sit on the floor and think about (laughs) everything I just did and how fucking great I, oh, sorry, I don't know if I can keep cussing on here. Fuck yeah, say whatever you want. Um, You know, and, and I, all I could think about was how when I first started, I was like nervous out of my mind and my first few shows... I would get so nervous that I would black out on stage. So people would be like, hey, oh, do you remember this part? And but when I'm you like, say black out, do you mean like you would faint? Or no, like I would your black would out off? like I would turn off in order to be able to do what I was doing without feeling scared because mm-hmm. I was extremely scared. And I still kind of get scared. But So um, in starting with this band, I was completely afraid and I was taking a huge risk because I was so nervous all the time. And now it's a few months later and I feel amazing about it and I'm so glad I did it and I hope that other people start doing stuff like this or well it's been happening for a while but I just I want more people to get into the music and more people to just like kind of get out there so that's how I've learned that you know taking risks will equal progress and now I'm just so happy that I that I'm in this band and Mm -hmm. I feel really lucky you know wow I'm a big believer you know uh in in my company Outer Heaven we have that I invented 20 core values you know maybe you've worked somewhere where it'll be like uh, admire or I don't know um, 
the admiration. Like you'll see these little dumb things like yeah. on walls, but like the company doesn't really reflect that. Mm-hmm. One of my core values, and I think it's number 11, is decision making is power. Um, most people don't have the guts to make the tough decision, so they make no decision, which is yeah. a decision, Definitely. and they have to live with that. Mm-hmm. How did you get the decision. guts to audition for this band? I mean, that takes guts, and you, obviously you decided, Yeah. and it was a great investment. You called it a risk, and I agree. How do, how, do, how, do you, how did you get the guts to do that? How did you get the guts to say, you know what, teaching is not my bag? How, how did you get the guts to do this, and, and how would you explain that to someone who, who's um, in that field of, like, I don't know where to go? I think that thinking about your happiness is the first thing you should do. If you're doing something that you don't love um, and it's obvious to you, then you should start thinking about something else. I think a lot of people get really stuck and um, and what I, it's kind of an oxymoron because I say you should think about it as much as you can, but at the same time, if you overthink it, you're never gonna do it. So with the Follies, I had just been thinking about, you know, I kind of want to start my own. I th- I was thinking that I was going to make my own music, but I don't really know how to do that very well. I can't play very many instruments. Um, I can't play any instruments at all. So you talk very fast, keyboard. and I love it. Now, oh, sorry. Now, no, 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 don't be sorry. Never apologize for who yeah. you are, ever. Um, <laughs> and that's not yeah. punk, right? Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. But, um, you know... Gosh, and I forgot what I was going to say. But, you know, with, with music, that's a big deal. Like, how yeah. did you know that you loved that? I mean, you would never really – were. did you ever – it takes guts to be a teacher in front of a classroom, but did you ever speak socially? Like, how did you know that's um, a feeling that I want and I'm okay with that? Well, when I was in high school, I did a little bit of drama. And I was too – you know, we did musicals, but I was too afraid to try out for any of the parts that were actually, like, singing and stuff. But I would try out for some of the parts where you would like dance or you just had like little lines here and there. And I remember my drama teacher, uh, you know, I would get off stage and he'd be like, you, you should really do something in front of people. Like, you, you know, you're, you catch people's eyes. And was that like 10 years ago? That was so long ago. Yeah, it was like 10 years ago probably. Mm, that so stuck with you. it stuck with me for a really long time because secretly I wanted to tell him like, I really would like to sing in one of your plays. You know, I'd like to have a bigger part, but... I wasn't brave enough to do that. So eventually um, that stuck. And also I grew up in music. My dad can sing. My mom can sing. My brother sings. Mm. My dad plays the guitar. You know, growing up, I grew up like um, listening to my parents. My dad would get home from work and maybe get the guitar out and they'd just like sing whatever song he found, you know, and and I would always want to join them, but I was really too shy. So I always had a dream of wanting to do something with music and wanting to do something on stage and performing. But... um, uh, I was thinking about it a lot in, in March, and it was just such a coincidence that when I was thinking about it, I saw their advertisement uh, for looking for a lead singer, and I was like, you know what, if I don't take this risk right now, I might not ever get a chance to actually do did, this. Did you, you audition know? while you were a teacher? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I, I mean, uh, March, April, and May, we were doing shows, and I was also teaching and what, practice what, every Wednesday. And What do you think about the opinions when someone says... Um, don't quit your day job. What do you think about the opinions when someone says, hey, why can't you do both? Why can't you be a teacher and then and then do a punk show right afterwards? Yeah. Well, In terms I mean, of financial stability, right? Think, There's always that argument. I think that it's very possible to do that. I don't think that the way that I'm doing it is the way that everybody should do it, where it's mm-hmm. like quit teaching and figure out what's mm-hmm. next. But for me, this is what's working because I my day job was making my... Uh, my happiness suffer because I felt like it didn't matter how much I did, it wasn't enough at my day job. So I don't think that everybody should quit their day job. Actually, our um, our bassist is an art teacher, and I think he's probably the coolest because he gets to do art with kids and teach them about music, and then he gets to come over here and hang out with us and mm-hmm. rock out. So it works for everybody. It works for everybody differently. For me. It just, I'm quitting something that I don't love mm-hmm. because I thought it was going to be stability. But at this point, I'm like, I'd rather not be stable, but be happy. You know, like I'd rather love, take love that Love is risk. a big word uh, I've noticed in your vocabulary. It seems very yeah, important to you. Definitely. Um, what are some things that you that you love you must have? If you didn't have them, you'd, you'd feel like you were dying. Um, I love music. Um, I love food. I love food so much. It kind of like guides me through life a little too much sometimes. Um, I love uh, style, like clothing, um, and like shoes and hats and sunglasses and mm-hmm. styling clothes and going to uh, shopping. Not like I want to own things, but more of like I love the aesthetic of mm-hmm. 
today, what do I want to look like today? And how is that going to represent me? I love I'm that I'm sure people feeling. tell you in your photos, and I'm not a creep, it's just your social game is is on point. Thank you. And, um, you know, every time I see a picture of you, because I met you this one time, and you looked like, oh, okay, I think I know this person, but she doesn't look like this person that I've seen online. And then every photo that I see of you online is different. Yeah. You're like a different person each time. That's yeah. on purpose. Def well, I don't think that being different every time is on purpose, but I do... Mix it up. Get up and decide what, what do I feel like today, and then I go from there. I don't say, like oh, this is an outfit that I need to wear, I say like, oh, well, I think that this feels good today. And mm -hmm. then I, I decide from there, you know? Mm -hmm. And that always happens to be different every day because you wake up and you feel differently every day. And if I'm happy, I wear one thing. And if I'm kind of in bummed out mood, I wear something else. But expression is always important. And I think it's funny that you say that I don't look the same in a lot of pictures because sometimes people will meet me and won't recognize me because yeah, of it. But that's and I cool. wish I, it's cool, but it's also weird because sometimes like I'll meet someone mm -hmm. once and they'll rec like they'll talk to me and we'll talk and then the next time they won't even realize it's me and they'll be like, yeah. hi, what was your name again? And I'm yeah. like, we talked for like 35 minutes the other day, but yeah. okay. You know, it's just, it's just, I guess, something that comes with like changing. You, you, you were saying expression. Um, I learned this year um, that the exact opposite of depression is expression. Yeah. And I've, I've noticed I when if I'm no matter who you are, you can you can be happy and some people are trying to <coughs> achieve to be happy. Yeah. But when you happily achieve and you're expressing something in whatever field that you do, usually people kind of tend to be fulfilled. Yeah. And that's what you followed. Definitely. That's a beautiful story. I feel like uh, I think the first thing I started doing was painting. I'm not the best painter, but um, but that's I, an expression of yourself. Yeah. Um, it was actually just out of the blue that I started painting and um, I did a piece that was most of my pieces that I want to work on are food you know uh, some sort of food kind of in there or what like you, some what humor. Do, what does that mean? Um, so my the first piece I haven't done too many pieces but I have uh, like goals for pieces that I want to do to maybe put on a show once like when I finally have everything done mm -hmm. but um my first piece that I ever did uh, I'm actually really proud of it. it took so long I haven't even finished really but it's called pizza my heart and it's like a it's a like a realistic outline of a heart you know mm -hmm. with all the I don't know what they're called but like all the different arteries and arteries veins and yes whatnot. exactly yeah um and but the inside is just a kind mm -hmm. of pizzas mm -hmm. so you get like really heart like a real heart but inside there's just kind of it's like a funny little cartoony type of pizza you, you know seems i've only this is the first real conversation we've ever had yeah and we saved it for the podcast but from the little that i know about you um you seem like a sweetheart you were you were um you know, your, yourself on your sleeve, your heart on your sleeve. Love is really big for you. Food, yeah, expression, and, and you put it all together in this painting. Yeah. It's all there. It felt really, really good to be able to say, I thought of this idea and I executed it and, and it's me. And I know that there's nothing else. Well, I mean, there might be other food art out there, but I think that this was like the first time that I put all of it in one and, mm -hmm. and it made me feel really, really good. And I feel like that's something that I... I learned from that experience how satisfied I felt doing something so me and I was like well well let's try more things so I started sketching and then from there I started trying to write some music and I haven't done much with what I've been writing but I hope that I will so I just feel like it all kind of came together to show me like you took a little bit of risk you put like a lot of love into something and it, it came out very rewarding so mm -hmm. you could just snowball that into everything and that's what I've just hoping to keep doing yeah. with like myself. I think it's important. I think repetition, um, like working out, it's all about reps. You know, yeah. you, you can't, you don't just work out once a month and say I did it. You know, you got to do it consistently. Yeah. Um, I hope that you are doing all these endeavors that you chose to do um, consistently, right? Yeah. I mean, you just played live just a few nights ago. Yes, I played on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, that's something that I do have a hard time with, though, uh, being consistent because I do get discouraged sometimes and then what I do when I feel discouraged is I give myself a lot of me time you don't have to do anything stay at home watch the movies listen to music you don't have to create just for the sake of creating because you want to you know I give myself a lot of breaks because I feel like if I don't 
when I do get into what I get into, like, I don't feel, like, uh, positive enough. I feel like I always have to, like, take breaks. Tell me more about that. I, I kind of don't understand. Okay, so, well, the, my biggest issue in my life, um, I talk about it on social media sometimes. I used to talk about it a lot more, but then I kind of stopped because I was getting a lot of weird energy about it, but I... Uh, yeah, sometimes you can't be too autobiographical. Yeah, definitely. It's important it to be crazy. authentic, mm -hmm. which I find that you are yeah. online. But it's but also tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get a lot of feedback, so it, it can be tough. Um, I've had... Um, I've suffered from... It's a possibility that I suffer from something called endometriosis, which is um, a problem that one out of ten uh, women suffer from. It's having to deal with your uterus. And it's kind of excruciating pain for like four to seven days um, monthly. And um, so that drains a lot of me. It's not 100% sure that that's what I have, but I've visited about nine doctors and they all think that this is what's happening. Uh, so I have a lot of downtime in bed where all I can do is nothing except for kind of just take the pain that's happening with me. So I use a lot of that time is downtime like mm -hmm. I'm thinking about what I want to do or I'm just like using it as free time to just relax as much as you can really relax mm -hmm. when you're in that pain so for me I can't be constant in everything I do I have to take breaks my body needs breaks constantly I've actually had to cancel some shows because of it because my body's like no you can't you can't get out of bed today so so that's been tough but it's also kind of nice to not have to do anything constantly, but take breaks and analyze and, you know, think about my next move and stuff like How that. How long have you been, you know, uh, coping with that? Um, since I was 13. So it's uh, been about yeah, 10 years. It's been, yeah, it's been about 13 years. Wow. Um, it, a lot of people ask, like, has it gotten worse? Has it gotten better? It's kind of been the same. It's kind of, uh, unless you felt pain like this, there's no really way to... To describe it, I've ended up in the ER before, you know, uh, it becomes very depressing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, those are the cards that I've been dealt with. And as much as I want to complain about it, when the pain is gone and I can get up and leave my house and see the sun again, I feel renewed and grateful. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something a lot of people don't feel. Yeah, you're right. But even though I hate what I have to go through and sometimes I'm so angry and so mad, at the end of the day, like... I can still come out with something positive and say I'm grateful when I'm not in pain anymore. Right now I'm grateful for not being in pain and mm -hmm. and and that's what makes me like strive to work so hard when I I'm not in pain yeah. is the fact that you know tomorrow I could be in pain and I'm stuck in bed am I going to use today to live like happily or am I going to like dread what's coming? No, well, I'm going to take that full force and kind of like use it mm -hmm. as like a push kind of. Is is this um ailment or whatever you want to call it uh whatever it's called mm -hmm. uh, is it linked with your period yes so it is it's, it is it's linked entwined with the, with the yes. menstrual cycle definitely the menstrual cycle what happens is so uh, when you became a woman it was there this entire yes, time there wasn't yes. a time before that no it was oh, no. just as soon as it starts happening well the the thing that it is is um the tissue in your uterus uh detaches every month you know mm -hmm. uh for your cycle what happens with endometriosis is that tissue does not only attach attach to your uterus, but attaches to other parts of the body. Oh, and okay. so when it uh, sheds, it sheds from everywhere, not just your uterus, which is where it's supposed to, but it sheds from anywhere that it could be stuck. So I have back pain, I have neck pain, I have uh, pain in my legs. I just have excruciating pain all over. Mm. And um, uh, there's not really much to be done about it. You can go in and like burn the tissue down, but the regrowth will always be there. And even if like you remove your uterus, which I've looked into plenty because I think about it all the time. I was going to offer that. There's no guarantee that, well, because the problem isn't just your uterus. The problem is the tissue growing in other places as well. Okay. So if you get rid of the uterus, you might feel a little bit better, but the tissue will still regrow wherever mm -hmm. wherever it is. Have you, you know, I won't say played with, but have you experience, uh, experimented with uh, different birth controls? Or yes, like that? I've experimented with many different birth controls over the no, years. Nothing is a little nothing, better? Uh, no, actually, some birth controls made it worse. Oh, no. Uh, like, you know, where I would get pain in, in a lot of the areas, in cer certain birth controls would give me just, like, shrieking pain in my legs, like needles, or I would uh, sweat, like, 
like I was going through menopause yeah. with some of them. So hot flashes. Hot flashes, like you wouldn't believe. People think I'm always exaggerating when I'm like, I'm so tired or I'm so hot right now, and people are like, oh, you're way too young to be feeling this sure. tired. But it's sure. kind of like, well, it all links in with this one thing that I have, and since people, a lot of people haven't heard of it, they don't know that that's how. Like and that's the only like, reason why I'm asking. Yeah, Because there's probably a lot of people who just can't talk about it that are like, me too, yeah. should I go to the doctor? So, so if you have uh, cramps, it's completely normal to have a little bit of cramps. But if you have cramps where you have to like go home from work or you can't have any physical activity or it kind of like starts changing the way you're thinking, uh, then you should definitely go see a doctor and, and talk to them about what it could possibly be because it could be a lot worse than what it is and um, some people just get on birth control and it just gets better. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, um, there's different stages of endometriosis and at this point there's like no cure so there's just a bunch of women having to deal with uh, like a consistent break in their lives every month just because of this. Have you, um, you know, I'm kind of reaching but is there, do you have to take that? No. Okay, I'm sorry. No. You know, have have you linked anything to your diet with this? Does this have anything to do with the food that you consume? In um, terms of like, are you conscientious about this? Will make me feel better or whatever. Yes, I did uh, start reading um, a few years ago about giving up dairy uh, because um, swelling of the body just adds to pain. So dairy. Uh, There's some sort of like inflammation going on there. Right? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, uh, dairy makes dairy is not supposed to be in our body to begin with. Like if you start reading about that, mm -hmm. uh, but in a lot of diets for endometriosis, you get a lot of stick with no dairy. Try to do a, a, the least processed food possible. So when I started looking into that, that's when um, I started doing my food blog because I was like, you know what, I'm looking for more natural food, but I didn't have a lot of time to cook, so I started. Uh, searching for that type of food around mm -hmm. and then the more I started learning about food the more I learned about veganism and a lot of the benefits from veganism came into uh, the endometriosis diet like if you give up a lot of things so your body doesn't swell mm -hmm. the pain it's still harsh but it's not as harsh um, so so that kind of linked in that way so that's how I found veganism and how it, it does help what I have. It doesn't make the pain go away, unfortunately. Nothing can make the pain go away right now, uh, but it does help, mm -hmm. like with the swelling and stuff like you that. Know, uh I used to be grotesquely overweight. I'm still overweight. I'm getting better. Um, diet's That's the hard. whole thing because diet, I feel, is like 80% psychology and 20% mechanics, like get, getting the definitely. food and everything. So I've been educating myself because no one else is going to do it for me, right? Yeah. And uh, one thing, and I'm sure no matter who you talk to, you're going to get different theories and whatnot, but uh, one thing that's really interests me is like the acidity in the body. And, you know, every body has like a pH level. And mm -hmm. if your body is, a, you know, alkaline, you know, some sort of things can't really manifest in your body. Yeah. I'm sure you've looked into. Definitely. Um, you know, how committed are you um, to your diet for strictly health reasons? Because from what I followed on your social media, you just love food. You love the aesthetic yeah. of food. You love, you know, when I something just food. tastes delicious. Yeah, I love telling people how great things are and making... I love getting people to go where I go. Like, hopefully, mm -hmm. you'll have the same experience. I had a great experience here. Come, mm -hmm. come have it, you know? Mm -hmm. I love to do that, but it is hard to say that I'm super dedicated to this healthy diet because I'm such a foodie. It's very, very difficult. And do you love food that is just completely terrible for you? I do. Like what? Um, uh, I haven't eaten them in so long. And I'm long, not trying to so trigger warning no, for everybody it is listening. Tough. It's so You're, tough. She just started sweating right now profusely. Well, because I haven't had uh, one of the things that took me the longest to stop eating that I completely love and it's so horrible for you is hot Cheetos and cheese. I just like, bought some for my girlfriend yesterday. It's not even fair how how good it is it just they do these things with the hot cheetos uh -huh. all the chemicals that uh -huh. make your brain say yeah give me more you know yeah. so and you then, never get full off of it no and then the the processed nacho cheese is not even real cheese even but it it just does something to the body and yeah. i'm very aware of it but it doesn't mean that i don't want it still do you That's admit, one of the hardest things. do you admit that um in our culture especially in america food is 
like a drug. Yeah. That for we sure. kind of cope with that. I mean, there's moments when I would get out of work in Edinburgh, and I live in Donna, so it's like a 30 minute drive. Yeah. And there are moments where I'm seeing I'm seeing things I don't yeah. even want, like KFC, McDonald's, and all like, these things. Heck yeah, I want. And, that and right I now. have to literally. It feels like uh, I'm a junkie, and I have to yeah. well, beg the, people don't offer me these the gateway is, drugs. The thing is, not only are we. Our society has us in a place where we're really, really busy. So the first thing we want is immediate satisfaction. Mm -hmm. What's going to be satisfying? I'm going to take five minutes at a drive through and I'm going to get a Big Mac and it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. But what is it worth? You know what I mean? So it is very easy to get addicted to something like that. And I also think that the way companies work, if pe a lot of people don't know, but they're, they have people with their sole job is just to make you addicted to this yeah. food. They've got people working on colors and aromas and uh, commercials and they've got people, you know, advertisement mm -hmm. just specifically to get you to think that this is what you need. Mm -hmm. And and then you go and then you get it and you feel satisfied so you mm -hmm. continue to do it and that's addictive in itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that teaching people that this is an art form that these companies have makes people aware of how little power they've had mm -hmm. and how much power that they can have if they start realizing that this is all a gimmick this is on purpose it's not a coincidence that we are so obese and we're just we're keeping at it it's 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 planned i mean their their goal isn't to hurt us but their goal is to sell and mm -hmm. an addicted person is a person who's going to consume for the rest of their life so I actually just had this conversation on the last podcast you know coca-cola the number one industry on the planet yeah um can afford hundreds of billions of dollars just in advertising and they can link to us decadence in a coke bottle all day just, long every day and all of a sudden go. you know we're triggered movies shows mm -hmm. commercials you've got so many things even when visuals sometimes you just go and there's like a coca-cola sticker you go and there's that's like true a, someone has like a coca-cola cooler right. and that's it's all that it's just everywhere and it yeah. surrounds you and people think it's so normal to drink a coke a day or two cokes right. a day and it's kind of like that's poison you yeah. know but people don't know that and and i think it's really important to get people talking about stuff like that so to bring it all together as a foodie as someone that is also very intelligent when it comes to these issues Thank you you you, you you can see right through all these you know schemes and the agendas of most of these companies that maybe have a positive intent they're trying to bring value yeah and, well they're people and, they, and, all that. and that's their job they're people and that's their job i would never say they're evil but corporations as non-people are kind of horrible because they don't think about everyone they think about how are we going to benefit ourselves mm -hmm. in the company of course the higher up you are the more you care about the money mm -hmm. but um it is necessary to know that this is how it works it's not that they and, want and to purposely and it's, hurt it's us. simple education you know most people don't know this most yeah. people don't know i mean and then and then they wonder why yeah and that's why i started the food blog because all my food blog talks about is local local restaurants here in the rgv because i realized that you know so many places were closing down places i love places with really great food were not making it because people were like oh i'm gonna go get some fast food or i'm gonna go to this chain restaurant and mm -hmm. and have drinks there and have food there and it's kind of like well, those restaurants are going to be fine whether you go or not. But, you know, like your tia with her taco stand, if you don't go there tomorrow, she's going to close. And what is she going to do if that was her passion for the, for all, making food was her passion and you don't go and I don't go and they don't go, then that's gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let people with passion in food who are amazing just be ignored because corporations are so good at are so good at getting us in right. so that's why i started this blog to get people to realize like we have a lot of amazing food we have a lot of amazing people and we need to support them because at the end of the day do you want to wake up to a place where all you have is fast food mm -hmm. uh i think that's a horrible thought and it i is. think that that could be a possibility here in the valley if we don't start supporting local food a lot more mm -hmm. because you know, sometimes I go to local restaurants and I'm the only person there and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, wow. this is the best place possible and no one's there and that makes me really angry. So that's why I started doing so much on social media of just advertising everywhere I eat. Everywhere I eat, if I put up a picture, that's free advertisement for those people and I'm willing to do that because I want to help, you know, and what I think you everyone should. is the percentage of, um, when you say local places here in the Valley, I instantly think Takaria. Yeah. I, I instantly oh think God, yeah. beef, beef oriented. Um, how many places are out there that, that that's not their, their gimmick um, in the Valley? You know, it is about like 85% taquerias and 
not that taquerias are bad because there is some taquerias that just blow my mind you know that i'm like god dang it they're doing something different or they're doing it traditional but they're doing it so well sure. you know uh but i do think that it's and sometimes that means it's it's especially unhealthy sometimes. oh yeah for sure if you're doing traditional i mean tacos, sometimes you're using like the best lard but it's usually the lard that hurts us the yeah most. of course of course but that, i think that's a huge problem in the valley that there's ways to do tacos there's so many ways to do tacos, mm -hmm. but we gravitate towards just one way. And if you visit Mexico, my family's from Mexico and, and my family cooks a lot over there and I have really great aunts that just make the best stuff and it's not all tacos. You know, mm -hmm. there is healthy Mexican food. There is, you know, different like sub regions of Mexico with different types of cuisine that isn't all what we have in the valley, but the, unfortunately the valley just gravitates towards tacos. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, <laughs> I think there is other things out there and they're starting to grow and I think the more that we support the more that we will see things grow and I've noticed it myself since I started the blog last year thing mm. more local places have begun to open up mm -hmm. and um, I think that if we all push then we'll start seeing more cuisine and less not that I don't want there to be tacos but if someone's opening up a place I would like them to think oh I'm gonna I'm gonna open up and take a risk with something different. Sure. You want oh. them to have options. Yeah, because you might open up a taco place and it might work, but yeah, you're not separating yourself from the bunch. And in order to make it as a local business, you have to separate yourself. That's just the way that it goes. Like you have to be different. You have to find a different way to get people's attention because saying tacos, you can think of hundreds of places. You won't be the only one. I wanted to ask you, and uh, it's not to bring it back up again, because I know it's not like the greatest um, topic, but mm -hmm. with your, with your monthly, yeah, uh, what do you call it? Um, I guess it's like a cycle, cycle. that I go through. Okay, okay. Cycle. With, with with the monthly cycle that that you know you've probably gone through over 150 times at this point, right? Oh yeah. Um, I know from my experience, anyways, uh, just from my perspective, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I know usually when women go through that cycle, um, you know, their brain make some crave food that they otherwise wouldn't oh, crave. Oh, yeah. So how does that, um, how do you combat that in terms of, you know, you're a conscientious foodie, mm -hmm. you know, but you have this voice telling you hot Cheetos with cheese and you know that's not good for me and it's probably not good for my cycle, right? Yeah, exactly. It probably doesn't benefit the mm -hmm. cycle. What do you do about that? I'm sure that's like a constant struggle. So sometimes um, the smartest way to deal with it is always having snacks that are, healthy and satisfying in your fridge or in your home. Uh, what I do a lot is I get like vegan ice cream because ice cream is like a huge thing I crave during that time. Mm -hmm. I just want something cold and something chocolatey and something delicious. Sweet. And you know, so I'll have vegan ice cream in the fridge or I'll have like some healthier chips um, to just snack on as much as I can. Um, but I will say that it's not every time that I can resist. And if I'm like in a really bad mood because I'm in a lot of pain, I'll say, you know what, like I've been doing really well for these last two weeks. I'm gonna have the hot Cheetos and cheese. And mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, and I do feel guilty sometimes, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what, like I deserve to not feel guilty to satisfy myself when I'm going through a really hard time. And maybe that's not the smartest thing because obviously like if you're feeling bad, fixing it with food is not the smartest thing to do. But at that time, I really don't care. It's like, I'm gonna put myself first and what do I want right now? What's gonna make me happy? And then I'll just, I'll, I won't take it overboard, but I'll just, I'll do one or two things that maybe it's not the best for me, but, but it's, I have to live with you, it. You it's sound fine. like a, a woman who's in labor, who's like, give me the fucking epidural. Yeah, I don't care. I'll have for the hot sure. And cheese. Dude, I, I, sometimes I wish that I could record myself through these days, but I think it would be really, really embarrassing and I'd have to really get the balls to like show people what it's really like because it's not easy to see. Only a few people have seen me, um, when that happens, but I am kind of like, it feels like I'm giving birth. I'll give you I advice. Uh -huh. um, I think you should Snapchat it. Okay. I think you should, uh, next week or when, um, the next week when, when you're going through this, yeah. um, flood your Snapchat with that. I mean, all of it. Like, record six hours or whatever of content about that. 
And just at that audience, just yeah. at that kind of micro level, because the way Snapchat works, are mm -hmm. you a Snapchatter? Yes, I just started actually. Okay, I don't even know. I don't fucking get it. All right. Yeah. Once Instagram implemented the story stuff, I'm like, oh, I don't have to worry about that. I don't know about that story thing. I'm all about it. You are? Yeah. I just, Instagram, once it stopped giving me things in order, I don't like it. Yeah, it just I know. It made me mad. I know. I got over it, though. Yeah. It's kind of my favorite still, social network. I'm still not over it. Not yet. Just because I feel like I was reaching so many more people. And now I feel like I'm only reaching like a quarter of them. Hmm. So I have like 1,300 followers and I How feel like... How often do you post a day on Instagram? Ooh, it just depends. It depends on what I'm doing. It depends if I have Are there some noteworthy. days where you, nothing? Nothing. Yeah, if I, if I Are have Are there a, some days 10, 10 um, posts? Uh, no, I'd say like at the most like four or five times a day. Okay. If I'm having like on Saturday that I had a show, I just kept posting kind of like what was going on so that more people would come out because it was a year and it was like their one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I can get like at least one person that I know to come out, that's like more people, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, so. I've noticed like with Instagram, now I'm kind of, I don't want to give away all my tricks, but uh, for those people out there, because social media is a big deal, um, especially if you're an artist, you know, you have to know how to play this game. It's yeah. everything. If you're mm -hmm. not on social, you're, you're dead um, in whatever business you have. But um, I've noticed the story incorporation that they have on Instagram it, 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 it creates it puts your profile top of mind every time it's That's posted true. and so Ooh, uh, I I, I've kept that. that in mind in terms of like okay I'll, I'll put something on the story every well, at least once an hour and people, and people that's the first thing they're gonna see That's on their true. on their home page and maybe they'll fuck that up Ooh. but I didn't want to give it away but take it you know honestly because I think it'll down, it'll keep people on the top of uh, yeah. it'll keep you on okay, the top good, of their mind good thing to know I didn't think about that I did start seeing the thing about it is, I guess I've been so mad at Instagram that I haven't looked at anyone's stories. I'm like mad, you know, I'm like, mm. Mm -mm. but I think that is smart because plenty of people are looking at stories. So I'm going to start implementing that as well. I never got into uh, Snapchat. I remember Snapchat uh, is hard for me. All I my young really friends that were it. like 17, 18, 19 and 2013 were trying to get me into it. And I was like, I like the permanence of here's my thing, this yeah. picture slash video or whatever is going to be there forever. But now that Instagram kind of has this, it's like, and it disappears in 24 hours. I enjoy that because now I can connect with garbage. It doesn't have to be perfect art all the time, which yeah. is good for my OCD. But it's something I, I want to, you know, I yeah. want to see more of you. I have a hard time uh, with stuff like Snapchat because even though I, I do post a lot of pictures of myself, I'm not taking the actual pictures of myself. Whereas in Snapchat, it's like you have to just, it's yeah. here I am and it's me mm -hmm. and I'm focusing on me. And mm -hmm. I find that very difficult to do because I find it kind of silly and a little bit narcissistic extremely narcissistic very right. self-involved and not say that we are aren't self-involved i can get self-involved sure. i i like live alone now so i feel like if i'm not self-involved then yeah i'm not doing anything you know mm -hmm. so but i think but your story with your with the cycle i think you definitely need to share that and i think instagram could be the best platform yeah. to do that it's also hard for me to and do also it, you, you won't have to be worried about that being there forever you yeah. know it's kind of disposable uh, the only difficulty with it is i'm in so much pain that i i just don't want to hold a phone that's how much pain i'm in really? like i bought you know i have a camera and and i thought like i'm gonna put it up and when i'm sick i'm gonna turn it on and and i'm just gonna like put it up but i find myself that i won't even get up to put press play because i'm like I don't think anybody needs to see me right now. I don't I'm, I'm want gonna I'm going to throw this out there now. in public, but um, if you ever get the balls, if you get the guts to do it, uh, let me know, and I will I would love to do a little you know, 90-minute thing about it. Okay. And I'll give it to you, and you can do whatever you want with that. Okay. That Honestly, be... because I only say that because the value I offer is, uh, I, I call what I do cinema, you know, it's dream language. When you have a dream, sometimes it's first person, sometimes it's third person, and in real life, you can't do that. Right now, we don't have drones following us around yeah. and things like that yet. But well, you know, I, I like to offer that that uh, objective point of view, mm -hmm. and sometimes people really use that because yeah. they're, they're they don't want to be the one yeah. behind the camera. I think that's the only way that I'd be able to share the things that I go through, and um, and I think what I hate the most is when I do share, I get a lot of people like, "Well, you obviously." When you say people, do you mean men? No, I get this women from women as well. as well because since not everybody deals with this type of pain, certain women think that we're exaggerating. Mm. And I wish that was a story. I wish that it could just be like, I'm sure. kind of just making all this up. No, it, it sounds like it fucks your whole day up. It sounds it, like I'm trying to get week. my band together and all week, this, and you know? then I can't do it. That's a sacrifice. It yeah, doesn't sound like you're overselling it's it. It's so annoying, and it's, 
not only is it detrimental to my body, to my mind, because I start doubting, like, should I even be trying this? Because look at how much this gets in the way and stuff. But um, what I get a lot from women and men, actually a lot less men nowadays, because I feel like men are kind of more like, I don't even want to touch that subject because mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. But I'll get a lot of women saying, well, you obviously uh, like feeling this way because you don't get, uh, you don't go to the doctor all the time. You don't go to the doctor every time. And I'm like, I've seen plenty of doctors and some of them have been helpful but so many of them have not because they're not well versed in like sure. what it is and also um unless i have surgery to have a camera in my uterus mm -hmm. there's not a hundred percent like this is what you have mm -hmm. type of deal so um i i get a lot of people acting like this is what i want like mm -hmm. i want this pain i want the attention mm -hmm. from the pain and and that really bothers me because i just want to be like fuck you, dude, like, you don't know mm -hmm. how hard this is for me mentally, spiritually, physically, and for people to be accusing me of not wanting to feel better mm -hmm. just really pisses me off. So mm -hmm. when I was sharing a lot of stuff, there was a lot of people sending me really great messages and vibes and uh, showing up to my place and just saying, like, hey, man, like, I didn't know it was that bad. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Anytime I can help. But I also got a lot of, like, negative mm -hmm. from me sharing so much there was a point where i was sharing it sharing it a lot and i think march is it march or february i'm kind of horrible march is endometriosis awareness month oh, wow. and so i was uh putting up all, as much as i could about it and i thought it was really positive sometimes but other times it wasn't and other times i got a lot of negative resistance from just being honest so mm -hmm. that's why it's been tough for me to actually say like on this day, I want to record myself while I'm in pain because they're going to be like, well, if you're recording yourself, you're obviously not in that much pain. And sure. it's kind of like, I just don't even want to deal with it. That's them, okay. You know? There's people today that deny the Holocaust ever happened. Yeah, people are insane. Yeah. I mean, not that all people are bad, but or people are bad in general. It's just people are so confused and yeah. think that their way of thinking is the only way. It might be best. possible as well. And this is what, you know, if I'm putting something out there and... Um, you know, like I know you said we live in a, you know, not, I know you said that, you know, Snapchat and all these things, are, it, it can be very narcissistic, but significance, like that is a human need. If somebody doesn't have that, they'll die, you know? And the quickest way for someone to get significance is usually to tear somebody else's building down. Yeah. So if they see that you're doing this and you're, and you're just trying to make something, uh, turn a negative into a positive, the way they get their significance is by shitting all over that for yeah, you. Definitely. That's the yeah, quickest way they can get self -satisfaction. what they want. Self-satisfaction, yeah. yeah. They, they want and that's what that is. And when you know that, that it's just a, a monkey human brain failure, isn't it yeah. easier to kind of just dismiss? It It is. It's easy to dismiss it, but I guess when you're in that much pain, yeah. the last thing you want to think about is negativity. Sure. And to feel that negativity coming out of something that is already so hard to do, mm -hmm. It it's not that I let them get to me it's that well maybe just not right now because mm -hmm. I need to think about me and what's best for me and my brain and my and my mind and my positivity like what's best for me so it's not about like letting them of course shit on what I think I need to do it's more of like I want to keep my happiness yeah this way and I think it's working sometimes not always but mm -hmm. I do think that showing people a little bit about what I go through could be helpful I, yeah, I and, and, and honestly, I, I, what, what I want for you is is one person being like, dude, I had that and I talked to this doctor and you should talk to that yeah. doctor or whatever it is. Yeah, I definitely I just want that. that, you know, you put it out there, you increase your odds of getting that, you mm -hmm, know, and I think you, you deserve that, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up here. This has been a great talk. Um, Thanks for having I, me. I, of course. Um, you know, I look at you as an artist and when I saw you the other day, I'm surprised that you, I think you recognized me. Because yeah. I was on the phone and I, I don't know if you got my attention or if we maybe we made eye contact yeah, yeah. or something. But I was happy that you called my bluff and that you took time out of your day to, to come and do this because it's still, it's still fresh and new, you know. But it's something yeah. that I'm passionate about. Yeah, and, it's really um, cool what you're doing. I'm very big on, a lot more um, I can't wait for someone to give me an opportunity. I'm going to go out there and just do it. Definitely. That's, you know? that's basically how everyone needs to think in the valley. Like, I think so. You want to do something? Oh, let me just wait. No, you can't. Like mm -hmm. everything has not been done. You need to like make it on your own. It's not going to be easy and you're not going to make money right away. But I think if you make a market for it, then it will be very possible for it to be very successful. And mm -hmm. and I think that what you're doing is great and you're very, very good at interviewing people. So well, you're I mean, nice. I look 
given it as a talk. It's yeah. just a talk. It's great. What's your band's name again? Uh, we're called The Follies. So the, you can the find Follies. us on Instagram at The Follies 956 and then The Follies on Facebook. Yeah. When can we see you live? Um, ooh, we're about to take like I think a month off mm -hmm. uh, to finish recording some stuff. Hopefully in the next month or two we'll have an EP release show. So that mm -hmm. should be the next time that we perform. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten to talk to my band about it too much this week, but I think we're all saying we need a break. Mm -hmm. um, just to get music together and all that. So no live shows like in the works right now, mm -hmm. but we do want to release like an EP part, an EP, um, and have like a show and you know just do that. Hopefully in the next month or two, and that's that's what we have looking forward to with the Follies. Are you still keeping up with your food blog? Um, actually, I've taken a break since May. I have not written anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I have written things, but I haven't released anything because I was having a really hard time with it. But um, the do you use Google Voice on Google Docs? Uh, no. I just really got into that. So obviously, I have a microphone. I could connect it to my computer, and this conversation, if I wanted, I could put it on Google Docs, and it'll transcribe the entire thing. Really? And it's perfect. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, and I think it, I think it's. I don't know if it was made for bloggers, but, but it, if yeah, I was a blogger, perfect. I would have been like, oh, I'll just do yeah. that. Do it. I do because I do have like some blogging that I did in memos, but it's so hard to like listen to yourself. Mm and just care to listen to yourself you know what i mean like i don't want to listen to myself over and over again it's very like i already went through it i don't i'm not going to mm -hmm. learn anything but i need to because to keep blogging so i think that's a really cool way for me to start blogging again check it out yeah i definitely will because i've been taking a break and everyone's like what are you doing like you right. uh you were on such a good mm -hmm. you know momentum uh, momentum and then i just kind of like gave it up for mm -hmm. a second but i do want to get back into it i'm going to start and i'm probably um, I'm writing about Grind right now, the coffee shop in Edinburgh that my cool. friend, uh, my friends own, and that'll be up soon. I keep saying that it's been like three months. And where can people find that? that? It's uh, www.vrgvfoodster.com. F O O D S T E R. That's pretty com. arrogant. Yeah. <laughs> You're the RGV. I'm the RGV Foodster. But you know what? You are. It's a word that I made up. It's it was never a real word. Really? Yeah. I just kind of took a play on hipster and said I'm like oh, I'm gonna man. be the hipster of food blogging in the valley. And not just you know? not just in the, the cheesiest of ways. Not just e, uh, a hipster of food, but D. I am the yeah. yeah. I mean. Uh, there's a lot more food blogging that's been started, a lot more blogs that have been started, and that's really exciting. And I just wanted to have a name that maybe people would remember or think is different, and and I just stuck with it. And it's been it's been cool. So so I enjoy it, even though it sounds funny sometimes when people are like, my friends especially will be like, oh hey foodster, and I'm like shut up, you mm -hmm. know, like it, it, it's joking, but at the same time it's like well you remembered, so mm -hmm. that's you won. cool. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, like it worked. Which is cool. So, yeah. yeah. Do you feel good about this? Uh, I feel good. Yeah. That's all that matters. Pretty good. Seems. Uh, where can people find you on Instagram? Um, so on Instagram, I'm the RGV Seams. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm going to stick with it, man. The RGV. I like it. I like, uh, when I first started doing it, people were telling me, um, you shouldn't associate RGV with your name yeah. because people have a negative connotation of the RGV. Yeah. And to that, I said, fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, my, my first film, um, it was two and a half hours long. It was a real movie. And in the trailer at the end, it said, it didn't say a, a film by Nimes Monroe or anything. It said an RGV film. Yeah. And people were telling me like, why the fuck would you, like nobody says a New York film or a Chicago film. And I was like, how many movies have, yeah. how many pe people have made a movie here in the RGV? I wanted it to Not be like, many. here's yeah. one of them, motherfucker. Definitely. So fuck yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I think like, People, the person that said, or the people that said, like, RGV has a negative connotation, I think, like, well, it has a negative connotation in your brain, so maybe you should figure yourself out, because you were born and raised here, I was born and raised here, That's right. and I'm a great product of this society, like, I it's, think so too. it hasn't been easy, and I have hard times, and I still struggle with the negativity, but... I was raised here and I still think I'm a really good person and I think that I've got a lot of talent and I think there's plenty of us that are the same, that have a lot going for them and for people to say the RGB has a negative connotation and like you're spitting in everyone's faces with talent and, mm -hmm. and positivity and, and I won't have that. I think the RGB is changing, I think the RGB is amazing and I think that like there's a place for everyone here and, and I just want to roll with positive only things, you know, and I, and I started I didn't start. I wanted to start doing uh, YouTube, but I've been very nervous about it because I'm so busy and I'm also nervous to like be on camera and stuff. But 
I just want to focus on like the positivity that a lot of people bring to the RGB and I hope that I'll get started with that soon. Um, if you need help, let me know. I do need help. I've got you on. Well, I'm the guy to do it. Now. Let's do yeah, it. For sure. Yeah. Um, I have a name. It's, it's going to be called Not What It Seems RGV. That's very just good. Just to stick myself in everything, you know? Just That's make it good. a thing. Yeah. But um, I think it'd be, it'll be a really cool thing and I've, I actually got a lot of people to interview like probably over a mm -hmm. hundred people that like reached out and mm -hmm. said like I want to be a part of this let me know how I can help let me know if you can interview me and I feel like I'm kind of letting people down because I haven't started it because I've been so nervous about it and also just so many changes have been happening in my mm -hmm. life but I do want to start that like as soon as possible to get more people visually seeing mm -hmm. things coming out of the RGB which a lot of people are already doing but I'd like to you know have my spin on it too I want to see your perspective on yeah, that yeah definitely I think I've got a great perspective and I think I'm surrounded by such amazing people all the time that I just want to put them like in well, you warfare. surround yourself with people with um, similar high standards. Yeah, definitely. And I think I just, that's good. I haven't always, but I just started making that a priority, seeing I have some friends that maybe didn't have my best intent in mind, but I've met so many amazing people that all they want to see is me progress, progress and... Um, and those are the people that I'm just sticking to. And I'm not saying like, I'm gonna stop being friends with these people that I don't have, mm -hmm. think have the same goal, but I just, you know, I'll see you when I see you and not everyone's meant to stick around, but the ones that are helping me like with this mindset, I'm like, dude, like we're gonna be in this and we're gonna be in this together. And I'm so grateful for everyone that's come in and, and like given me a chance to do so many cool things and just, moved me along you know it's been it's been really great I'm really grateful for all those people that's yeah. beautiful <laughs> I'm happy for you and nobody Thank does you. it alone yeah no that's the thing um, a, a lot of people want to do things alone down here and and I just I've realized that you can a, a good man can do anything alone but a great man realizes that that you need the people to do the greatest things mm -hmm. you know and, and that's something that I'm learning slowly too like you need a lot of people People are what motivate you at the end of the day, you know, it's great. Well, I'll end this on, you know, uh, once upon a time you were a teacher and, and I guess you'll forever remain a student. Yeah, And I think sure. that's a good place to be. Definitely, definitely, definitely agree with that. Thank you, Sims. Thank you so much for having me.